Hello, everybody. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson joining you. We have an exiting storm system out of the northeastern United States that dumped copious amounts of snow. We're going to review that. In the meantime, out on the west coast, making landfall, another huge storm system that will have impacts for days across the Rocky Mountain West and the plains. Everything from deep snow and others will see a chance of severe weather. In fact, four days of severe thunderstorm risk that takes us right through the big eclipse. And how will that impact all of that? Well, it's coming up right now. And let's take a look at that radar, first and foremost, to get you caught up with what's going on right now across the nation. Out in the East Coast, it's mainly rain right now as we see this exiting storm system. I'm going to show you here in just mere moments the showers of snow that fell there, dumping copious amounts. But up north of Quebec, we still have quite a bit of, well, snow shower activity in blue. And in the greens, we do have rain showers for many in the Northeast. Much of the nation's midsection right now, quiet from Kansas City and Minneapolis straight down to Dallas, Fort Worth. Not going to be the case forever, though. And a snow system has delivered a punch of snow to portions of California's mountains. That is evolving now as a Colorado low in the Rocky Mountains that will have impacts that will be far reaching as we head through and into through the weekend and into the big eclipse day on Monday. We'll have severe weather chances as well. So we'll look at the winter blast and we're also going to look at all of these risks. Let's Let's get started with a look at some of these snowfall reports that fell today. A real quick look at those unbelievable and copious amounts of snow. Check this out. We're going to start in the northeast where we have the exiting storm system and some of these snowfall totals that you see tabulated on the right side by my friends at the National Weather Service. Look at Vermont. Look at New Hampshire. Anywhere you see an orange or a red dot, we have snow over a foot. That's right. Numerous locations off coastal Maine all the way into Vermont, seeing some huge amounts of snow. Northfield picking up the biggest amount, 23.5 inches there. Killington Village, 23 inches of snow. How about Porter, Maine with 21 inches of snow? Peru, New York getting in the game with 21 inches of snow as well. And Altoona picking up 19.2 inches of snow. That's in New York. Now going out to the West Coast right quick, we do see that the snow showers were a plenty once again in the Sierra Nevada. T check it out. These uh, ski areas picking up 19 inches at Mammoth Lakes uh, out there in parts of coast uh, California rather in the Sierra Nevada. And on the I-980 corridor rather through Reno and Truckee, numerous areas picking up several inches of snow, upwards of 6 to 10 inches. More is falling in Oregon, where we do have some healthy snowfall that is outside of Kennewick, Washington, to the south and to the east of you. 13 inches of snow reported in Joseph, Oregon, with that particular system. That is a look at the snowfall reports. Now let's talk about the track of this storm system. And to do that, we're going to look at, well, here is a look at the model. We're going to take a look at the big picture, the national picture of how this storm is going to be tracking its way through the lower 48. To do that, we're going to go ahead and put this into motion. Notice the Colorado low that's up in Montana diving south, evolving in Wyoming and Colorado with bands of heavy snow through the western mountains of Montana, Idaho, Utah, and into Colorado. As this storm exits onto the plains on Saturday, this is Saturday, it will bring and evolve into a chance of severe weather with all modes of severe weather possible. Hail, damaging straight line winds, and we cannot rule out a tornado or two with this system as it works its way through. Nebraska is where the severe weather potential will be. Heavy snow in the mountains of Montana and Wyoming with this track Mountains of Wyoming will see very, very heavy snow bands persisting throughout the day Saturday and again on Sunday as it moves into the well, Black Hills of South Dakota. And look what happens after severe weather in Nebraska. Huge amounts of snow will be possible in the Arrowhead with a lot of wind as well. This storm system works its way out into the plains as we head into that big day on Monday. For those of you wanting to view the big eclipse, it could have cloudy impacts for some. The northern plains will see a chance of mixed precipitation, including some snow. 
snow. That's a look at the storm track. Now let's take a look at what it means just in simplistic terms from my friends at the Weather Prediction Center. Check this out as we sneak you over to this look right here. No, Weather Prediction Center has a look here at what we can expect as we go through the day on Saturday. Here we go. The exiting Colorado low will work its way in. Um, we will have light snow where you see the white areas. We could have some areas of heavy snow, particularly in areas where you see the uh, dashed uh, uh, lines there. Now there is that uh, fire danger index in gray. So from West Texas and the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, but there's your severe weather threat, Nebraska and into Kansas as we go through Saturday. Now the snow showers will remain in the Rocky Mountains as we go into Sunday, and there'll still be a severe weather threat in the plains. But as this system evolves and works out into Monday, we'll continue to see a risk of severe weather. Now to show, show you that, on Monday, where the severe risk shifts out of Kansas, look where it is as we head into the big eclipse day, right in the path of totality, a risk of severe weather. In parts of Texas, there'll be a risk of severe weather primarily focused around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but we will refine this as we get just a little bit closer. So now let's take a look at some of the snowfall potential with the forecast as we go through uh, and the system works its way through the mountains. To do that, we're gonna look at the national picture here once again, but I am I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to a look at snowfall accumulation. It's going to be that wet, heavy spring type of snow. So here we go. We'll get you through Saturday. Boom. Look at where the snow focuses. We're talking Utah, Montana, and look at northern Wyoming and western Colorado. Those areas with the pink have a decent chance at seeing over six inches of snow at elevated terrain. We'll see over one foot of snow in places. And then as we carry this out, look what happens in the plains of Nebraska, the panhandle of Nebraska, and much of eastern Wyoming, including Devil's Tower, right up into Billings, Montana. And um, th those areas will pick up copious amounts of snow in excess of six to eight inches, likely for many of them. That does come with some wind and just a smattering of snow across the northern plains. Plains. Carrying you through a little farther, we'll see the system exiting down into the south. And now let's take a look at some of the severe weather potential with the system. What we're going to look at here is more of a national view at, at what this system could be doing as we head into the day on um, Monday with regards to, well, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, severe weather risk. This is a look at energy in the atmosphere that's going to be available to produce thunderstorms on different days. Now, as we go through Saturday, that risk is highlighted mainly in Nebraska and into Kansas. Then as we carry our way through into Sunday night, we'll have some Texas showers and storms that really do increase in intensity right there. Shazam! And that is on Monday as you get ready for the big event, the, the eclipse. So there will be that risk of severe weather as we go through Monday. And then on Tuesday, that risk shifts into Louisiana and parts of eastern Texas and the far Gulf Coast. So several days of severe weather will be possible as we go through this event. And we just want to make sure that you have that information about and now let's see what this looks like as far as the impacts go with regards to the big eclipse. What does it mean for clouds? Are you traveling to see the eclipse? The hotel rooms are booked. Is it going to be, well, just totally blocked from view by clouds? Here's a look at an American model, and I'm going to show you two models and two completely different answers. I'll tell you which one I like and why. Let's start with the American model, and on this model, I'm going to go ahead and highlight just the cloud cover now, and that's one of the things that this model can do is show us where it thinks there will be clouds. In blue is where you're going to see the clouds as the dog Pedro here is scratching away. Now, we're going to get into Monday, and we do have Monday at the morning hours quite a bit of cloud cover across the United States in the path of the eclipse. Here it is once again. So this is Monday morning. Here it is getting started midday. Look at all of Texas, Arkansas, and the boot hill of Missouri completely socked in with clouds at noon. That's when it's starting in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. Now the eclipse, the total eclipse will move into the boot hill of Missouri as we go into three o'clock in the afternoon. Here's a snapshot at three in the afternoon. Notice the northeasternmost United States is clear on this model. So that might be where the best chance of un- 
unblocked viewing of the of the eclipse will be. So that could be very well what takes place. But now let's take a look at another model. And to do that, this is the Canadian model showing us that same thing. And you're going to notice a huge difference. Here's the low moving out through the central and northern plains. And there is a clearing of the skies because of, well, drier air on this particular model as we go into the morning. So morning viewing could be okay, particularly in places like the Boot Hill of Missouri, southern parts of Illinois and Indiana on this Canadian model. Notice the Northeast is also clear on this model as well as we go through the event. That said, I like this model better, the Canadian model, because I don't think it will be completely clear as this shows, but I don't think it will be completely cloudy as the other model shows. And with convection and thunderstorms, well, those puppies can create a life of their own and we can have those complex clusters of thunderstorms meander wherever they want to, blocking an entire state or tri-state region. So we'll have to kind of pay attention to those models that forecast convection as we get a little bit closer. That is a look at the impact though that you can expect with regards to this huge low pressure system, the severe weather potential, and your viewing of the big eclipse on Monday. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. It's sure a pleasure having you here. If you liked what you see, go ahead and click that like button. I'd love to have you subscribe and give me your thoughts. Let me know where you're watching from and let me know if you're going to check out that eclipse as well. Hey, you could even, well, let me know what you see. Thanks so very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and I will keep you up to date right here.